No, yeah, those I've absolutely plastered. Yeah. All I've done is just shut my laptop from my desk and like collapsed in bed. That is that moment because you felt like you were with your mates, so it's all sound. And then there'd be that moment everyone hangs up, you like close your laptop and you're like, what the f- oh, now I'm just drunk in bed on my own. Yeah, this is if you'd have done peppers. that all night, you'd be an alcoholic, but it was all right because you're on Zoom. You're on Zoom with your mates, it's but like going to the pub. All of a sudden, you're not, and you're like, fuck, <laughs> and I'm just sat in bed. Yes. Well, welcome back to the podcast. Welcome back to the Scratch Record podcast. Today we are joined by Stanley's. How are we, boy? How you been getting on? All right. Yeah, doing well. Just thanks for having us. It's been a long time coming, so. Yeah, it has, man. It has. We've been to be fair. Like it's been. We were talking about it just before we came on call, and we've been kind of in communication for what feels like for pretty much probably since the start of us kind of doing stuff and like clipping things up and that. And you managed to catch wind of us like shouting you out, and it was like. Since then, it's been constant back and forth, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, literally, it's been. Like, sometimes we try and arrange some, and then you know, some would come up. But I think the nature of being in a band is just you're so unorganized. Like, it's, you know, we can never sort of get things done. So it's good Mate. to finally be here. Yeah, it's the same with us as well. Like, there'll be one minute oh, we'll it's be bad in. combinations, and yeah. like, <laughs> bands are the same, and then we're the same. So like the amount of times when I have someone booked and that's why like whenever people cancel at any point, we're literally like not bothered because it's like, we're so going to have to do that ourselves at some point and be like, yeah. oh shit, we're putting out like an hour before because this and that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's one of them getting, getting things organized and especially with it all, like with so much COVID stuff, you just don't know, like we'd want to do one in person. We want to try and put zooms in, but we're here now. We're here now. So I'm sure we had to have a good chat. We are. We are. And it's like, since we've had to launch our, this season three, so many times, I feel like I'm, I don't know when I'm going to stop saying it, yeah. but we've had to launch it so many times. So this time around, we've got a new section of how we're like starting the podcast. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw you in the deep end and you've got one word to answer these questions. Right, so you can't no go pressure, right. no, like you know, you literally get one word, that's it. All right. Right. Okay. So what's the first thing you grab in the morning? My phone. What's the best band ever? Storm Roses. Who's your biggest idol? Uh, John Squire. Best sandwich villain. Ham. Boring. <laughs> Word word that describes word that best. Oh, word that best describes you drunk. Um loud. Best album of 2021. Loudums. Do you sleep with socks on? No. Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram? Instagram. What's rock and roll? Liam Gallagher. Where'd you go when it's sunny? The garden. T shirt or jumper? Jumper. Mint toothpaste? <laughs> Occasionally. Sorry, how is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. You can say anything as a question. Yeah, just make it higher. I'll just name it off the <laughs> question, question mark. Mint toothpaste? That'd just be like table? <laughs> what makes you happy? Uh. This podcast. Yeah. That is the answer we wanted. Well, <laughs> perfect end to the segment. That is a good segment. I, I can't just lead to just saying random things at people and just see what words they give back. Yeah, it's great. You can just, and it's any question as well. We gave Jason Allen one like the other week, like, what's your favorite age? And it was what did he say? <laughs> he said 25, which is good because I'm glad he picked up. Yeah, I'm glad age. he yeah. said that. <laughs> like, yeah, you drop a 12 in there and you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a 14. Oh, you're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good segment. I like that. Yeah. Well, let's let's take this back then. I feel like we do always do this, but it's always nice to get a bit of a picture. Like as I said, we've been speaking for a couple of years. Um, and I know like you released those first two singles like towards the start of 2020, but Take us back to the start of the actual band. How do you all know each other? How did it get started in the first place? Oh, well, we're going to have to go back here. Like, a lot of people don't realise this, but like 2016 sort of thing, because we, we used to be a cover band just playing the pubs like in Wigan and, and near Manchester and stuff when we were kids. We were like 
16, I just learned guitar. Uh, me and Rob, the drummer and the backing vocalist, we went high school together. Um, we had a few different lineups, but nothing really worked. And then we got Harry in on bass, um, who we knew from high school. Then we all went to college in Winstanley, which is like, if you don't know it, it's like just outside Wigan, towards like oral places like that. Um, and we met Tom there. And for the first couple of months, we were like, you know, looking for a good singer, someone that we'd get on with. I think we'd heard him sort of singing, like jokingly at parties and stuff. We thought, it's pretty decent, this guy. And he had this like sort of swagger about him that, uh, that I think singers need. He had a bit of an attitude as well, which is kind of good. Um, so we started sort of pestering him every time at parties on the weekend, like, oh, you should, you should come down for a jam. You know, you should have a sing with us. And eventually he did. I think he caved in, uh, came down, and we just knew it was right. And we just knew the lineup was was sorted, and we started playing all the pubs. Uh, we used to do, like, three hours of covers and stuff, um, played so many pubs. But then we started writing our own stuff because that's, that's what every band wants to do. You know, I think when you're young and you start picking up guitar, you don't do it to to just do covers, you know, you want to write your own stuff. So we started doing that um, and started getting a bit of a following around Wigan and stuff. So, um, and there we are today, really. We've not looked back since. Beautiful. Yeah. So the I, I like the idea of this, like doing covers and pubs and stuff like that. What what was like the top three covers you'd do? Like what was your favourite ones to play? Fan favourite as far as uh, we used to do Chelsea Dagger by the Fratellis yeah, and it used man. to go off because like ev- everyone from our college would come down. I'll send you some videos. Yeah. So we'd get like a hundred like teenagers in a pub, all our mates. It'd be absolutely packed. Like loads of pubs would just serve everyone when they're underage as well. Yeah, Probably yeah, shouldn't be saying that. Nah, don't, and don't, honestly, name, don't name no pubs, but I'll <laughs> yeah, 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 the gist. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to do them in. but yeah it, honestly it was mad because you get like 100 teenagers in the pub packed out all on shoulders and you're just doing like Chelsea Dagger and you know, Arctic Monkeys songs and it'd just go off it was absolutely mental and it was to be honest it was a bit of a come down going from that and we'd start writing our own stuff and playing further afield like Manchester and Liverpool we didn't first we didn't bring this in following it was you know it was a bit it was difficult at first, but then obviously once we sort of stuck with it, we then got over that hurdle and then started bringing our own crowds that weren't just our mates. So it was, I suppose it worked out all right in the end. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of like the prog- the natural progression, isn't it? Of like, there is a bit of a come down because it's not as, people aren't necessarily singing it back to you, are they? Do you know what I mean? That feeling of like, because yeah. people know every single word to some of them fan favourites. Do you know what I mean? Like, whether you even listen to indie music every now and then, like you're gonna know it. So then when you start bringing out your own stuff and mixing that into the mix, it's like, you start to like, like almost sit there and people are listening and t- taking it in a little bit more. Yeah, I think when you first start gigging uh, as a band, and you know, a lot of the time you won't have any music out on Spotify and stuff like that. It's a lot to ask of an audience to sit through, you know, sometimes like 45 minute sets of unheard music. Mm. You know, especially if you're not sort of, if you're not madly into going out and discovering new bands, it's, it's a lot to ask. And especially because there's like three bands on the bill, all of which you know, 45 minute sets, you know, you're there for a couple of hours listening to music you've never heard before. So it's, you know, it's hard really to bridge that gap. But, you know, if you do stick with it though, I think it, for us, we found it quite rewarding because one person singing back, you know, your own song, is more valuable than a hundred people singing back to you, you know, Arctic Monkey song or a song by the Fratellis. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think there's definitely now a much wider audience for people finding new bands. Cause like at the minute, like what was it, Yard Act got a number two. Mm. Was it number two last number two, week? Yeah, or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Number, yeah two. No, number two is crazy for Yard Act as well. Yeah. I was buzzed by that, but it kind of like shows that there is now this audience of people that are finding new music and pushing them up the charts mm. and it's like just correct it's wild to see wild to see yeah. yeah it's 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 an interesting thing that as well because i think like it's a bit like when we started this like when you've got all your mates behind you that's very different to having like fans or people that are actually listening to your music because like even like let's say if we put our first podcast out and it's still one of our most listened ones because like when you put that out everyone that we know will be like oh what's he doing what the fuck are they doing like this yeah, is cool yeah, let's yeah. check it out yeah, let's yeah, listen yeah. And then after like three episodes, those people who are like, I've never listened to an indie song in my life. What the fuck is this? They like, yeah. I'm not going to keep listening. So then it's almost like you have that spike where you're like, this is amazing. And then quite quick you realize it's like, ah, converting actual people to this is a whole different ball game. It's a bit like yeah. that, like having those pubs and your mates and it feels like you kind of have that peak. And then it's like, 
now generating an actual fan base for your own songs somewhere where you're not from. It's like a you do kind of do that a little bit, don't you? Well, yeah, literally you summed it up perfectly there. I think when we first did uh, this is going back to 2019 now, our first Manchester show, uh, we'd done a gig in Wigan and sold about 100, 150 tickets at a club called Independence, doing like mainly covers. I think we had two or three of our own songs. And all our mates came, like loads of people from Wigan, our age came, and it was a, a, an unreal night. And we got a message on Facebook from this feeling saying, you know, we've just seen you sold like so many tickets in Wigan, uh, come and play Manchester. And it was at the old Jimmy's. Uh, they put a gig on with us as headline, and I think we sold it out about 100, 120 tickets. Um, but it was all our mates. And then after that, like you were saying, sort of, you know, they dropped off. A lot of them weren't into indie music. You know, a lot of lads nowadays are into like, you know, grime and, and house and all sorts. So it was, mm. it was sort of difficult to keep them coming. So it's interesting you said that because we sort of did feel like we had to start again. So mm. Yeah, starting afresh, isn't it? And like maintaining an audience is kind of the hardest part of any game in, entertain, in entertainment in general, whether you like music, podcast, video creation, like that keeping an audience and keeping people there and wanting to come and being almost engaged in whatever you're putting out and buying things like that. Do you know what I mean? Like funding your stuff is like, it's a whole different, it's a whole different kettle of fish. I find it quite fascinating though. Cause there is a bit of an art to it as well. Do you know what I mean? Like you're, you're finding yourself going from having this bigger sport, dropping down and then being like, right. Okay. Now here we are. This is a fresh, clean slate. We can do whatever we want on it. And I, I, I think that's the best part about doing anything in the creative industry. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I agree with that. We used to get like people messaging us saying, you know, play this song or shouting the gays, do this, do that, or whatever. But it's not why you're in a band. You want to do what you want to do, and getting that fresh, clean slate is so rewarding. To just, I mean, after, it's similar to after lockdown. We sort of we did our like first ever EP, and it felt like a, a brand new start because everyone that had got into us with a better life and measuring gold in 2020, a lot of them people weren't still sort of regularly engaging with us so in a way it was sort of like a new a new start we had a new producer you know new management and everything so it was like almost like a brand new band when we came back out it was was it was daunting but also rewarding as well because seeing that you know people were still interested and that there were more people out there that were still wanting to find new music was was good i suppose yeah and that's that's interesting that you speak about that because i wanted to kind of touch on this because I think you're in quite a unique situation where you had those two songs come out at the start of 2020 and they kind of blew up, didn't they? Especially in the like indie scene. I know they were like, they were, it was, there were two songs that everyone was talking about and being like this band, like if they can keep releasing at this quality are going to be fucking unbelievable. And then you obviously had that really big gap up into the EP. So was it a bit like, like, did you feel pressure of that EP that kind of, like you said, these people have been quite engaged with these two songs and there was such a big gap. It's like, is there anyone still here or are, is it going to live up to what we've already done and like a bit more overthinking going on? Yeah, I mean, because it had been so long, I mean, I don't want to get into it too much, but there have been loads of like personal stuff that had gone on in the band, you know, um, people were in relationships that they weren't in and lived in different places. And it was like, we weren't the same four lads that we were you know, 2019 sort of, you know, naive 18-year-old, 19-year-olds that had, had just done, a, you know, their first ever proper song. It was like, well, we're different. And we all had sort of not given up on it, but we'd become disillusioned with what it meant to be in a band and perform to people because we'd not done it for so long during lockdown. We did, we did some stuff for Scott's menswear, like acoustic things on Instagram mm. and some stuff for Kendall Calling, but it's not, you know, it's not the same. So we've become quite disillusioned with it, really. Um, but our attitude was, let's just put it out. Because we recorded it, like, I think it was about six months before we even put it out. So it was like, let's just put it out, see what happens, mm -hmm. go from there. But then we put it out and we got such a massive response. I think I remember doing an interview on the day uh, with Rob, the drummer, um, and we put the vinyls on sale at six. And the interview, I think, started at about six. And then I remember the guy, uh, a guy called Dan Potter, telling us during the interview, it's like, yeah, you know, the vinyls you've put on sale, you've just sold like 300, 400 in about half an hour. And we were like, what on earth? It was like, it was a strange feeling really. But just to see that people still cared, 
like, well, you know, it's something I'll remember forever. That like, just getting told that you sold that many vinyls in a matter of minutes was mental. That is like mind blowing numbers. Mm. Like for because I feel like selling a vinyl now is quite a big, it's quite a big deal. Like someone's, yeah, yeah. you know, like like it's a good chunk of money, and it's something that like that person's kind of like adding to their collection, so they kind of seen you as like worthy of going in with their like all of their vinyls. I feel like that's like especially yeah. when I buy one, I'm kind of like. I love this music, but is it something I actually want to own in my collection as mm. part of like, this is my music taste sort of thing? So if there's people to commit to that, yeah. it's kind of crazy. And for like 400 and a half an hour, it's I absolutely know, it's absurd. absurd. But that is so, that is yeah. ridiculous. But it shows that that's why it's quite a nice community because people had of like heard those two songs when at any time in that like 15 month period and been excited for that EP, no matter how much time it's been or whatever it's going to be like, people are like, yeah. oh, like they're just going to engage with it, which I think shows the quality of those first two songs for a start, but it's like, it's quite nice that the community kind of support in that way. Isn't it? Yeah, it's like, like you're saying about vinyls, then it's, it, you know, it still baffles me. We get sent pictures all the time on Instagram of like the EP, like next to the Stone Roses debut album and like, what's the story, Oasis? And it's like, it sort of doesn't feel real to have that record there. And like you're saying, they're not cheap either. You know, it's a, a lot of money for people to go out and spend, you know, I can't remember how much they were, about 15, 20 quid, something like that. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot of money to spend really on one record. So, Yeah, and it's also so much better, like it's your thing. I think that's the best part about selling stuff that you've created. It's like it's your own project that someone wants. And I think seeing people that you don't know own it is just always such a such a rewarding feeling and yeah it's a bit like the clothing and stuff isn't it mm. like we've done clothing like having people listen to podcasts and come to gigs and all that sort of stuff like it's similar but it's like when you when we've done clothing before and if, like a few people have bought that and then when you see someone wearing it yeah, yeah. whether it be a mate whether it just be someone that we don't know whatever it's, it's quality you still get a feeling of like someone yeah, spent yeah. between like 20 and 40 quid on a t-shirt or a hoodie or something is a lot of money and then actively like going out the going house out of the house and like, wearing it like, wearing it to like fuck? anywhere as well yeah. not even wearing it just specifically yeah. for something we're doing i think it's quality yeah that like physical kind of proof that someone is a fan is like kind of crazy you know it's very mm. cool and it led that, to a chart that, yeah i mean well i was just gonna say then it was like to go from a, a lot of people who buzz off like you know making money out of what they're doing and things like that but like you were saying then it's just seeing people in your own clothing and stuff like that. That I don't know if the other three lads are the same, but I can speak for myself. They're like, that is the buzz for me. It don't matter how much money you're making off what you're doing or whatever. If people are enjoying your stuff, that amounts to 10 times, you know, whatever like money value is worth. But yeah, the, honestly, when the vinyl got in charts, because we'd like announced it so early, we'd forgotten about it being eligible for chart placement or anything like that. Mm. And then someone sent, I think it was Harry's mum, uh, sent him a picture like someone from work sent me this you, you know, you're in the top five UK vinyl charts and we completely forgotten about that because <laughs> we released it I think we announced it in June and then by the time people started getting it and they started releasing it I think it was like December so it's I think it was the first enough. week in January yeah we, we got sent like I think someone from Harry Mum's work something sent him a picture saying like look have a look at this you know you're in the vinyl charts and we've seen it about right when you get a post on Instagram now because mm. you don't pretend that we knew about it because we have no <laughs> idea. Uh, that is sick. That is quality. That is quality. I feel like the charts are just so it's just like a proper validation as well. It's just a proper yeah. validation of being like that is that's good. It's a good bit of work, and it? it's yeah. like a proper pat on the back. Yeah, and as you say, Pete, I, like it's even better, I think, when it's like indie alternative, like up and coming music because. Like that's not what the charts are now. So yeah, like it's, it's it's like a yeah. it's like a victory for everyone involved. Like whether you actually bought it or not, it's still like when you see a band like yourselves getting the charts, you're just like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Whoever like, it is, you're like, yeah, hey, go on, lads. Like that's that's really good. So <laughs> no, that is that is class. And there may be another EP on the way. Yeah, I mean, we went in the studio with the uh, Gareth, uh, like a producer in Wigan. We kind of. We enjoy like sort of keeping it local. I mean, we've been to studios in like Liverpool, went to Par Street there, um, which like blossoms, you know, mm, Red Rum Club, yeah. loads of like amazing bands have recorded in there, Lavens as well. Um, but then we, we also went to Manchester and went to uh Blueprint Studios where like Elbow have been and mm. like loads of other massive bands. But we sort of when we went to Wigan, one in Wigan was a guy called Gareth, we got a better sort of end product than we did. And we went at 20 of them like that expensive in nice studios. I think it's just because we kept 
we kept it local, you know, to like a Wigan producer who cared about our music and the amount of time they put into it, it equated to more value than, you know, a blueprint or pastry. We went, went back with him, uh, recorded another four tracks still during lockdown. Um, and at the minute, we've just been trying to like organise releasing it and stuff like that. So hopefully, I don't want to give any dates because my manager will probably kill me. But um, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, you will see uh, new music announced. That's cool. That is, that is buzz. Exactly. That is buzz. I feel like it's probably catching a vibe as well off of someone local is much easier than going to them bigger studios because these bigger studios will work with whoever and it's like a just yeah you've got to get on with that producer haven't you you got to get catch that vibe and get that ep done written mm. and done in the, the right way for you lot have you lot found it quite uh what creative elements are you adding into this new ep that's maybe potentially a little bit different to your debut one it's we've got a bit of braver i think um just with with sort of like studio sounds and things like that because we went in with someone who'd done the first EP. He knew our sound, so there wasn't that like breaking the ice period that you normally get, mm -hmm. you know, and finding out what you sound like and you know what suits you. It was like he knew exactly what we sounded like and what we wanted. So it was then just about building on that sound. So we experimented with things like strings and and keys a lot more and sort of layering different guitars on that one as well. Um, I sort of messaged a lot of people like um, Scott from Lavins and Mark stuff like that and sort of borrowed different guitars that I wouldn't have normally done um, and just sort of experimented with the sound a bit as well. We had, I think we booked longer, so we had more days to just sort of like mess around, well, not mess around, but, uh, you know, just sort of like try out different things. Which oh, mate, really it's a glorified fun. mess around, isn't it? Let's be yeah. honest. So yeah, for us, basically, yeah. <laughs> but it's like having that time constraint if you're in the studio it's, it's not good because, you know, you're under the pressure and a lot of bands, especially if you've not been doing it long, and sort of cave in and get nervous and, you know, mm. get like red light fever when you're trying to record and it's, it's not good. So making sure that you have the, that like extra amount of time is priceless, really. Yeah. That's good as well that like you see it that way because I think some bands, like if you have too long, you start overthinking it and getting a bit like perfectionist with it a little bit and being like, oh, we've we could have done it in a day, but now we've spent five days thinking about it. We've actually binned it all and all this sort of stuff. But like, it kind of shows you've got that kind of comfortable creative process so you can go in, and take your time and just like get it done. Yeah, I remember I read an interview, you know, Gallagher did about the third album, Beer Now, uh, which I actually rate, to be fair, I don't mind it. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was saying, oh, it's awful because, you know, we had months in the studio, like messing around. It's the same with the Stone Roses with their yeah. second album. Yeah. Uh, they both bands were trying to follow up something like something great that you know that you probably couldn't ever follow up no how hard you tried but yeah because they had all this time and money with like major labels they, you know they could never capture that moment again because you know when you've got like two years to do something you're not going to rush about it are you so no nah, exactly i think that's why so many debut albums are like bands best albums because you're just always going to have a bit of a fuck it attitude because it's your debut so like it can't can't go wrong, can it? If no one listens to it, then it's like, well, fuck it. But so you just get it to a point and then you're like, yeah, fuck it, Dave, I'm let's just put it out. And that always has the best, like that good balance between you've had enough time to get it where you want it. But once it's there, it just goes out. It's no like overplaying with it. And uh, I mean, that's that ends up being the best album for it. Yeah, it does. I like I like debut albums, especially just ones that are like a bit more unique as well. Like a lot of them are a little bit more out there for the time period that they are. Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like yeah. like Yard Axe one is very, like that did really well, is very, very unique in comparison to a lot of other stuff that's hitting the charts. You look at Post Malone's first album was very similar. You know, no one was making music like that. Oasis, Stone Roses, like that was all still in its early infancies of that stuff. And I feel like for debut albums, they do so much better if there's that, I don't know, distinct, like, mm. like out of the ordinary sort of thing, like a wow factor. And, and I think if you are in that mindset of like, fuck it attitude sort of thing, you're gonna, you're gonna be more inclined to actually play with them things and get into these studios with people that haven't been heard of before. Cause, and they've got these secret talents that no one knows about. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think it's interesting what you're saying because a lot of like bands that are just starting out, a lot of the time don't have the money to get like an amazing producer and a lot of things like that. So they've got to rely on 
people they know and mates and like small circles. And sometimes, you know, it just works out better because they're getting unique sounds. You know, they're not getting like churning out the same rubbish that would be like, you know, expected on a major label. They're doing something unique that like will stand out. Mm. And you see all them ones where like people like start pl- like having the guitar bit put through backwards and looped in a different way and run through seven different things. And it's like, you might as well try it at that point. Cause you've yeah. got to make it something completely different mm. to what everyone else is hearing. It's like the um, Oasis stuff. They managed to turn it up. So it was louder than everything else. So they put the decibels higher on all of the records. So when it was played on the radio, it was louder than anything else that was played that day. Huh. To make it yeah, stand it's out. Genius. It's yeah. good. It's just quality, little things like that yeah. that just completely switch it up. So it was louder and more arrogant. And it might have been a little bit more distorted. But when someone hears it on the radio next to, I don't know, Elton John or something, I'm trying to think of who would have been, like played on the radio at that period. <laughs> like, I don't know, Prince. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna like really, really stand out. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Yeah. Um, in terms of your like creative processes, how does it go? Like it just in terms of like actually like writing lyrics, writing music, is it quite collaborative with you lot or is there like one of you leading the way? It's like, it's, I mean, it, it, we've gone through different stages in the band of what works and what doesn't. It's when we started out, we were just like lads in a room that would just sort of throw ideas out. Um, and it was like really collaborative. But I don't know if it's sort of, as we've got older and the process has changed, we sort of all sort of like do stuff separately now, really. Like we'll mm-hmm. send, like I'll send a demo over and then, uh, you know, Harry will like do it in his house or whatever and Rob will put the drums in his house and and Tom will like track the vocals and stuff like that. So it's different. It's different than it was when we first started out. But I think maybe that's, maybe that's due to COVID a lot of it because obviously we had to change the process of how we do things then. So it was never... You know, it was never always going to be the same. It was always going to be that sort of evolution. Yeah, definitely. I think that's interesting. So I think those, like, in A Better Life, Measuring Gold, I think, like, the lyrics really stood out to me. It was, like, the first thing. Like, whenever I hear those songs, I just think, like, A Better Life is a really clever lyrically song, like, almost, like, very yeah, mature yeah. lyrically. Like, when people are like, this is a young band, and, like, singing that song, you're like, this is very kind of like elevated lyrically. And then I was listening through all of it today and then you listen to your EP and it's almost like everything else has like come up to that level as well. Like lyrically, it's still very clever. Then I was like, the guitar is fucking genius in that bit. And then you listen to the drums and you're like, that kind of like fits a lot better and has a bit more power. Like I feel like that slight change between those two songs and the EP is like everything is at that top level now. Like it's not one bit that sticks out. It's like the whole song is really good. So it's interesting you say it's become like slightly like less collaborative in a sense of being separate, but that's led to if everyone being able to focus on their bit, it's kind of raised the whole quality of the song. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I think we sort of see it now as, as, um, as more about performance in a way, like about how, you know, each member can execute their part on the song rather than, you know, worrying about, oh, we think that chorus there should be like four bars extra or whatever. But yeah, I think as well during lockdown, you know, we've all got better as musicians. I know, you know, like me and Harry haven't stopped playing our guitars and, you know, Rob's not stopped drumming and Tom, you know, like singing in the shower every morning and all that kind of thing. <laughs> so I think it's like we, <laughs> we'd grown as musicians over that, that period so what you're hearing on a better life you know like ability wise from you know the individual instruments doesn't sort of it isn't the same as it is on the ep because we've had a lot longer to like sort of perfect our craft i mean like tom only started singing um like properly in the band like when, you know when he joined so he was like 16 17 i was the same on guitar i'd only started like i think i was 16 in year 11 at high school so it was sort of like when we were doing a better life in 2019, it wasn't like we, you know, we'd not been playing very long. I certainly like, wasn't a very good guitar player. You know, Tom hadn't been singing very long. So it was sort of you what you were hearing was quite raw. Mm. Um but I suppose that maybe that adds to it, you know, maybe that maybe that is what makes it special. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think it it definitely does have an element of making it special, but it's always, and we spoke about it a lot, is like when you're looking at bands such as yourselves are up and coming, like the thing that is a big 
tick is when you go, here's a raw, the first couple of songs are really raw, but really clever and has something about them. But then as you progress down like a couple of years, that you see that improvement Impression. because it's like you, you do see a lot of bands come up with something that's quite clever, but then just kind of stick with that kind of stuff and it never quite improves. And they're the ones that end up tailing out a little bit. Whereas you want to see yeah. that like progression up from really raw, talented songs to like really complete, very tight, well performed songs. And I think that's like what your EP has done is like proven that progression a little bit. Yeah, well, I'll take that as a massive compliment. So <laughs> good. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, I wanted to talk about Wigan. No, oh. <laughs> I, I have, I have a couple of questions. My first one, Wigan kebab. Is that an actual yeah. thing that happens? Do you eat it and what does it taste like? I really want one. Have you seen them? Yeah, it no. it does. I'd, I'd say it probably gets eaten like with the band like every time we go to rehearsal because where we practice is in like the town centre. Uh, Wigan Council sorted us out like a rehearsal room. Uh, so there's like us, Lavin, Lottery Winners, like Flechettes, uh, loads of bands sort of like all right next to each other in the same sort of rehearsal space. Um, and there's like four different pie shops within, I'd say, 100 metres of the rehearsal room. So you've got like Green Orchies, Galloway's, Greg's, Pound Bakery, all of which do pies and then balms. The Wigan Kebab is basically just, if you don't know, uh, like a pie on a balm and then you just eat it together. And it actually is, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's a lot of carbohydrates. It's not very <laughs> it's good. It's a lot. It's very nice. Oh, really yeah. salty as well. I can't believe you've not seen it's literally the pictures just make me crease every time I see one. It, it's, there's just no like there's no extra element to it. It's literally a fucking pie <laughs> just slapped in a roll. And then oh my it just God. eat it. But it's elite. But it's just like a de- proper Wigan thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's just I don't know, it is a sort of a bit of a joke, like you know, but it's pretty nice and it's pretty cheap, so it seems to be the go-to. Like, I don't know any of the bands that rehearse there near us that don't nip out and, and get a pie bomb. That's <laughs> fucking Superman. wild. That's <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, I was like, I have to ask that. Could you imagine if we tried to ask one of them down here? Yeah, it'd just be fucking... Just be told to get the fuck out, I think. <laughs> I was gonna do that. I remember, I remember going on tour and we gigged in uh, one in, well, it was in Brighton with the Lavins in uh, I think it was October. Yeah. And it was a chippy like round near the venue, and we needed some food like before the show. I think it was on stage about eight. So we nipped out about seven, like some quick takeaway food. Went over to a chippy, walked in, asked for like uh, chips and gravy and like a pie, and they were like, "Well, we don't do gravy." We don't do pies. I was like, well, what is this? What kind of- <laughs> where, where the fuck am I then? What type of establishment have I walked yeah. into? <laughs> That's Brighton for you. Though. Yeah, Brighton yeah, probably. Yeah. You'd, be, you'd, you'd be all right for a gravy and a pie here. They just wouldn't put I don't it think you'd. I don't think you'd be all right for a pie, you know. You'd get I don't like know. A pucker. <laughs> oh, a yeah, true. They'd true. have pies. They're not, but they wouldn't be good. Yeah. I wouldn't choose it. But they'd probably have a. They have them in the one down the road for me. I just, I wouldn't choose it. Yeah, no, they're not my uh, they're not my go to the pies in a chip fish and chip shop. No, I don't ever I don't ever go to a chippy to be really honest. Oh, I do like it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nah, they're not for me. The chip, it's a very very controversial thing to say, but I fucking hate chip shop chips. Oh, I fucking oh. despise chip shop chips. So right, absolutely embarrassing. Well, they're like soggy, aren't they? Yeah, that's the point though, isn't it? No, they're soggy, mm. and then you. Then what are you in... into? Like fries, then? You into like McDonald's chips? Is that your? Song? He's a vegan. That's why. I'm vegetarian. All right. But, but what would you eat? That can you even eat fries? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can eat potato. <laughs> Do you know I mean like I can eat stuff? But I, I, I never asked what they cook them in. To be fair, yeah, it's definitely if, because yeah. if you did again, you'd be told to leave. You'd be like, excuse me, are they, <laughs> what are you cooking your <laughs> chips and <laughs> fries in? They'd just be like, <laughs> no, I don't even know what I, I. I wouldn't say no. I'm more like a. I like. I like if if them chips were like, maybe deep fried or like oven cooked or something like that. I don't like the, the sogginess. Yeah, it's the best bit. Nah, nah, they're not for and me. Then you put vinegar on to make them even more soggy, and then it's like it's just a mush. You can just like pick up and grab it, you know. And it. I mean, and you don't, no. but you could. <laughs> but you could. You could. You could. You're a sick fuck. Anyway, my other question about Wigan <laughs> was slightly more serious, <laughs> and like, 
like you've kind of already been mentioning, I feel like Wigan's like this weird, like glitch in the matrix hotspot for indie bands. And I'm like, just bait, what the fuck is going on in Wigan? Because it's just, every, I feel like every week there's a new band and you're like, where are they from? They're like, Wigan. And you're like, of course they fucking Well, yeah, because they feed you yeah, pie yeah. and chips in a fucking bun. I bet you can buy a pack of cigarettes from the, <laughs> from the chip shop as well. Do you know yeah. what I mean? There's something in it. But yeah, it, no, it's, it's interesting you say that because literally, like, it must be every week or two, I get sent, like, in my DMs, like, have you listened to this, like, Wigan band or whatever? And it's like, oh, they're from, like, say, the, the message will say, oh, yeah, they're from Hindley, which is, like, an area of Wigan. I'll be like, that's down the road from me. How have I not heard of them? And it's it's, it's insane because, like, the one I discovered recently called Casino Club, I went watching them on uh, Friday last week at one of the, like, the venues in Wigan, and they were, like, amazing. Apparently they've been going like a year or two, and it's like I'd literally never even heard of them. So it's, it's mad, like there's so many bands. But I think that is partly because of like in Wigan, there's a massive indie club called uh, Independence mm. with like a lot of DJs there, like Dave Sweetmore, Dean Rimmer, um, play like exclusively sort of like new indie stuff. Mm. Well, and stuff from like the 90s as well. A lot of it is like Oasis, Storm Roses, but then. Sam Fender, Blossoms, like Catfish in the Bottom, and but even like Wigan bands, so like Lathams, Oz, and like loads of others get played there. So a lot of kids are going in there and then wanting to pick up guitars and they even have gigs on and stuff. Like every new year, they'd be like a massive 12 hour like gig full of indie bands. So that's fucking sick. The new year gig is fucking wild. I yeah, I've got that. loads of like videos of it. We, we normally do it every year, but we missed out with COVID. Like some of the lineups they've had a mad. They did like an Easter one, uh, I think it was about two years ago, with the K's headlining it. Nice. I think Laddams were on, band from Manchester called King Cartel, like a few others. Like the lineup was insane. And it was just like some club, like down at like a side street in Wigan, and all these bands had rocked up. It, it was mad. Like they sort of keep it on the down low, but if you're from Wigan, you kind of yeah. know it's happening. So you, you sort of keep an eye out. So. It's, I, I really lo- I love the fact that, like, you've given it as an explanation because it's, like, the fact that, like, having an indie club, like, in the nightlife can influence bands. That's such, yeah, like, it's yeah. almost like such a promising thing that that mm. could happen. Like, oh, yeah. That's, like, that's so sick. And I think I, it does, it's the Northwest in particular that just works as well. And it? it's, like, 42s in Manchester, like, like if you yeah. opened a club like that in Northampton, no one would go. Like it's a bit of a I don't know if it's like a chicken and egg thing, like you have to like open it first mm-hmm. See and get people in and then they get into it and they're like bands, or do you need the people to like the bands first and then open it that way around? Like it's yeah. like I feel like if you just drop one, it would at least to start with wouldn't work and you'd have to really work on like getting people in. Yeah. And then them getting into yeah. the music and then like working the other way. Like it's a bit of a whereas like I feel like Northwest, like anywhere near Manchester, Liverpool, like people just get it a bit more because it's just like in the DNA of the place a bit more, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's you know, it's quite sad though, isn't it, to see that a lot of people, you know, especially a lot of my mates that went uni down south and stuff, they're like, there's no sort of indie clubs. Like in Leeds, you've got, you know, Stone Roses Bar, Manchester, like you said, you've got 42s, Liverpool, you've got shit indie disco, mm. at Wigan, you've got Independence, and there's like loads of it going on up north, but that's not really the case down south from what I've heard. No, you don't get nothing. Like Leeds has like like loads of little small venues that have gigs on every single night. Whereas yeah. like here, around here anyway, specifically, it's so fucking rare to have gigs on anyway. Just in general, like they've got gigs on, but there's a lot of like a there's like a metal crowd around here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just too far for me, but like that's about it gig wise around not here, even really. Just- just DJing indie music. I mean, Garibaldi is the only place you can really go where you're going to get indie music played. Yeah. 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 And it's only like quite a small pub in town that like we go to, but it's like, again, it's not, it's not very overly kind of popular, well known. But other than that, like all the main yeah. places you wouldn't get near like indie no, music. No, you wouldn't even see shame. it. It's a shame. We'll change it. We'll yeah. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. yeah you should start putting nights on, start putting yeah. like events on. Well, that's the, that, that is the that is the goal I think is get events on because I really do want to get a venue eventually. Like that's like the fucking aim is get like a small yeah, venue yeah. and just it be constantly full of just up and coming artists. I think it'd be wild. Mm. Well, are y'all like me and that sort of thing into indie music as well, or is it literally just you two? Some of them are. Yeah, some we of are, them are. It's weird because we like I feel like 
you kind of like slowly influence your mates because obviously we spend so much time doing stuff with indie music, whether it be events and they come to the events just because they're coming to support or whether it be, you know, we've spent so many hours on podcasts every fucking week. So it's like they slowly start being like, oh, I'll give that band a go or I'll give that artist a go. And it, yeah. some of them do like it, but some of them are still more like grime orientated or house orientated. So it's mm-hmm. weird, really, isn't it? It's a weird thing. I always think like, I don't really like the term indie music anyway. Like, it's a bit of a weird term. I was just thinking, yeah. no matter what music you're into, I feel like if someone came to us and was like, this is the sort of music I like, I'd be able to tell you some up and coming, more alternative versions of that that you should listen yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And almost like get down mm-hmm. some rabbit holes. Like, I think people are really put off. Like, I think if you ask someone, mate, into indie music, they'd be like, no. And then you'd ask them, like, do you like that? And they'd be like, yeah. And you're like, well, that's indie. That, that could be deemed to be yeah. indie music. Do you know what I mean? But they just yeah. switch off at the term. But yeah, I mean, I think we definitely could, but I, it's not it's not like a wide fledged thing, is it? That people are into it, right? Like, no, no. Specific well, pockets are. of people that you'd be like, yeah, they are, but like the yeah. broad horizon, and I wouldn't say it was the most popular choice. No, no, God no. Thing, but... Well, and also though, like, there's like a, I feel like there's levels to indie. Mm. Do you know what I mean like you've got like indie where there's you know you rolled up jeans, you white socks, and that, and mm. then there's like alternative. Yeah, and they're in, exactly like I don't. We don't knock about with many like, like it round here anyway. We don't really knock about with many like really alternative type of people. So it's like, I think that's I think that's one of the reasons that like we maybe don't necessarily gig a lot round here because the people we knock about with like it's you're more likely just go down the pub, watch someone play a little acoustic set, and then move on from there and go out. Yeah, I feel like the thing with indies is such like a. Sort of sweeping generalization as well. You might, you know, you might get like I'm trying to think of two examples of indie bands that are completely different, like Crawlers got, and Backer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> it's like literally complete opposite ends of the spectrum. And you know, it's like people just people just paste them with the same name, and it's sort of just because they're a guitar band, yeah. you know, they're deemed indie, but I still think it's right. Just- really. It's no. anything live. Do you know what I mean? If you play like yeah. the instrument live in some way or another, you can be classed as indie. Because I mean, in, in theory, yeah. indie is independent, which is just anyone who's not signed a record label. So it can be yeah. any genre, but they're just unsigned. But obviously, again, now that doesn't work because you describe like Sam Fender as indie, one of the biggest artists in the country, but they've kind of adopted that like alternative nature of like basically if you're not in the charts of being like a pop or like grime or like big artists then you're indie but like you're not unless you're unsigned but then again like limiting people to unsigned bands is a bit odd but then like yeah the word alternative has yeah. weird connotations like it's just no proper way to describe it so mm. that's why i hate when people are like what song music you're into so i'm like i really mm. don't mm. want to say indie music because it's just fucking but it's music. cringy anyway but like I'm yeah just, like, yeah. just like actual music just like, i don't really care what it is it can be like most genres yeah but it's just music like that's what i'm into like real real music with instruments that can be played live yeah. I, I can't think of another way of saying it like, no, nah. but that's when you start coming across really pretentious and people are like, what music are you into? And I'm like, real music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I was like, I can't say that. So, yeah, interesting. <laughs> it's interesting though. It is interesting. Yeah. I think people think we're probably balanced in the podcast anyway. Oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah. We, oh, oh, yeah. So, what do you do? Oh, yeah. We interview bands like up and down the country. And they're yeah. like, ah. Oh, so what type of music are you into? And I'm like, don't get me started. Please don't get me started. You won't have heard of them. Have you heard of a really small band from the south of Wales called? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, another thing I want to talk to you about, I'm just going to reel off. And yeah, yeah, crack on, mate. Yeah, this, uh, the live recording at, oh, yeah, at Wigan yeah, yeah, Stadium, yeah, yeah. That just in general, that's yeah. really fucking cool. Like the EP sick and just like talk us through when did you have the idea for that? And then like, how did it actually come to fruition? Cause I feel like that's the sort of thing like you'd fucking say and be like, Oh, do you know what we should do? We should record a live EP in the Wigan stadium. And I'd be like, brilliant Elliot. I was like, yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> and then like bringing that <laughs> oh, whole thing so to, should record like, was that your oh, lot's like, yeah, it's seen is it now. <laughs> was that your lot's idea that happened? Did someone else get involved? Like how did that whole process happen? Well, it's, a lot of the time with ideas that we come up with, I think it's important for bands to constantly be innovative. Like you've got to stand out on social media these days. You've got to like, like look at a lot of the bands that have made it over like the last year or two. They're, they're unique on social media. They're doing mm. something different. Like 
loads of bands are popping up now on like Twitter and TikTok and stuff. And I think a lot of the time, one of us will have like a crazy idea if we're on like a night out or say if we're just hung over rehearsing, like saying we should do this. Then everyone will go, nah, nah, it's a rush idea. How do we have that to happen? And then it'll sort of snowball and then we'll actually sort of send a few emails out and then people might get back and say, yeah, we'll do that. Like it was sort of similar to the Wigan Band-Aid thing. It was like, you know, we sort of like sent a few emails out to the club and they were up for it. Like they had such like, a, they've still got an amazing media team. Uh, there's, there's a lot of new people running it now since uh, like went into administration, but Wigan Athletics media team are amazing. Like at all the half time, half time, all like all literally all season, it's like, us, the Laddams, like loads of other Wigan bands. But we sent emails out saying, uh, you know, could we come film? And then we didn't expect anything of it, even a reply, really. And they were like, yeah, yeah, no, we're up for it. Um, use our media team. So we had, like, the camera crew, uh, a guy called Nick, like, helped set it all up and everything. And I thought, literally, I think the charge was, like, a tenner for the electricity. That was it. That's fucking oh, so that good. Is, that is Amazing! Yeah. Well, that is fucking amazing. Maybe we should yeah, message so cobblers or well. something. I, I, I think they'd pay us to go in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Shit off. laughs> but that is like fair fucking play because, like, it is the easiest thing in the world if any mark comes in to be like <laughs> delete. Like, I've just kind of yeah, been bothered thinking about like setting that up, but for them to be like, not Get only be well like yes, it. but then also like, like it's easy for them again to just open the doors and be like, yeah, come on then. Like you can have the space for an hour. Good luck. But like to yeah. actually be like, no, nah, we're, we're about it is like, that is really cool. Fair play to them. Yeah. I think it's one of them ones where like, as soon as an, an idea snowballs and you've got like actual structure to an idea that's unique, a lot of people are willing to listen. And I think that's where mm-hmm. you kind of like a lot of people fall at that first hurdle. And they're like, oh, that idea is good, but no one will ever do it. When actually like realistically, you talk to the right people you'll be able to get an idea up and running for next to no costs. Mm. Yeah, literally, literally. I think it's like people rally behind it because, you know, with with the people at Wigan Athletic, it's not, you know, none of it ever about the money. It's all, always been about the town. And that, that's like the amazing thing that we found in Wigan. It's like the sense of community has yeah. been amazing. Like the club, they did, we did like a, like a, an acoustic session about 20 minutes, played about three or four songs. And they got one from each of the bands in Wigan. So there's about 10 of them. And they put them on one video. And they used it as, like, pre-match entertainment when we couldn't have, like, fans in the stadium. You know, because we are like, streaming it. I think it was, yeah. like, a tenner to stream the game. So they sort of made it, like, an immersive experience for the fans because you'd still have entertainment on your TV. Yeah. And it's like they always wanted us to get involved. Like, before lockdown, we had plans for, like, a gig in the stadium, sort of in the stands. Oh, um, but obviously it sort of fell through because of COVID and stuff mm. like that and it's you know since clubs come back it's more been about getting it back on its feet so it's yeah. not really the right time but we've I mean recently in the last week I can't say too much but we've been chatting to Wigan about getting some sort of some cool stuff going for like the socials and things like that and they were dead responsive so hopefully uh, keep an eye out we'll have some more stuff like that soon that's that is quality. That's sick. And I think, like, going back, that's, like, it's another reason probably why some of these bands popping up because, like, someone like Wigan Athletic doing that, like, if you're thinking about starting a band and then you, you're, See, you're watching so the much. football and all these local bands are being played, you're going to yeah, be like, yeah. well, hold on, what? Like, we want to be a part of that. We want to be played before a Wigan match, all this sort of stuff. So, like, just, like, it's a small thing, but it just subtly, like, gets people involved in it and be like, oh, I, like, it kind of inspires you. If you're teething, a lot of things like starting bands you're always on the edge of it aren't you so you're always talking about doing it never actually yeah, yeah. do it and seeing something like that is that thing where you're like you would be mad yeah go on just then. go ah fuck it yeah. so we should we just do that because that looks sick we'll do that so now fair play to Wigan that's all cool yeah I love it I love seeing stuff like that because there is so much opportunity for a lot of young people just to kind of come up with an idea shoot it across to a media team and a media team a lot of them could be responsive do you know what I mean like especially how, like how social media runs at the moment. Like you have to make viral videos for anything to do well. Do you know what I mean? You've got to get the views, yeah. you've got to get the clicks, you've got to get everything for it to actually do well. And it's, I think a lot of people that are newer into the industry understand that. And a lot of the older people don't. So there's an actual massive wave of people doing collaborations with different brands and bigger brands and stuff like that. And it's just because people are willing to take the punt nowadays. Is there any what is there any yeah. brand or like company or organization that you really would like to work with that you haven't as of yet? 
Um, oh, we've been quite lucky, really, because we've done a lot of stuff with, uh, like, Scott Menswear, like, Fred Perry, uh, like, Pretty Green and stuff like that, and even, like, some small and upcoming clothing brands as well, like, um, they've sent us clothes and been like, you know, would you feature this on your music videos and stuff? Mm. But we've been quite lucky, really, that, um, you know, we've been sent, like, clothes from Scots a few times, which I remember, like, the first time we got it, we got, like, a massive box through um, like, all insane. clothes we picked out we, we didn't even think it had happened or anything and he sent it through when we was in the studio and I remember the Rob our drummer coming in with it and opening the box and we all had like new shoes and like because we're all like you know none of us are like none of us are not well off but like we're all like you know all working part time jobs and stuff and we can't afford to go spend like 300 quid on loads of brand mm. new sort of Adidas trainers and then to have them all come through in a box it was just like mad it Sick. was mad for you yeah, that is quality. That is quality. We need to do that. Uh, if anyone wants to send us literally anything. Well, I'll take anything, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I've actually got a rule that I've made and I've, I've stuck to it so far and it's I'm either I'm either wearing clothing that's been sent to me by brands, by like bands, not brands, bands, yeah. like an artist, so they've designed themselves. People send me clothing, I'll wear it or it's clothing I make myself. So I'm like trying to steer away from buying anything from like already big organizations so i'm like either going to buy it from bands yeah. or i'll obviously wear it because i fucking love wearing these bands t-shirts because some of them are sick mm. but it's like a new thing that i'm like i've been doing it now for God, it must be nearly six months or so now and i've not bought a yeah. new bit of item of clothing and i've managed to get around like wearing new clothing and new items new items we've made or things we've been sent through and i think it's i think that's the i, I love doing shit like that because mm. there's always something that you can like even if you took a tenor towards a band to get a new fucking promo for their single T-shirt, I'll, I'll wear it. I love it. Yeah, it goes, it goes a long way as well because you might, you know, someone might come up to you and say, oh, what's that T-shirt or whatever? And then you'll say, oh, yeah, it's this band, you know, go check them out. And it's like that that sort of publicity that comes with it as well. You know, it's not just not just about you supporting them. It's about, you know, getting other people into it as well. Yeah, it gets to the point where I'm wearing it to everything. Like, I don't own many T-shirts that aren't, like, band t-shirts now so i like will go to like some form of work in like a cover sets t-shirt and people are like what's that because it's like a fucking yeah. glow in the dark cow on my chest and i'm like oh it's a band from manchester but lead singers from around here so you know they're pretty decent have a little look and it's like it is it's that like full-on like proper marketing and it because i'm then just being like yeah, yeah these yeah. are sick like have a little buzz and it works i think it's, i think it's class yeah, yeah. it is yeah i love it right well we normally have one more section left of this podcast and what we do is we kind of shout out bands that we think aren't being listened to don't have enough publicity there aren't they aren't necessarily being discovered in the way that you think they should be is there anyone that you're listening to at the moment that you want to like shout out and tell people to listen to and get on before they blow up yeah i mean this i'm glad you asked this because like about a month ago i made a playlist on spotify called self, shameless uh, self plug here but I made a playlist called uh, Wigan Music which is like some of the Wigan bands that I've been seeing like on the weekends and like nice. I've been watching and stuff and, uh, and there was so many people that got back on Twitter and were like you know I found this band from this playlist and like amazing it's like how have they not got more listeners and stuff uh, but just to mention a few like the facades from Wigan they're like they're doing amazing at the minute and um, you know, they did a gig in, in Wigan, like, well, they announced the gig in Wigan about two weeks ago. It sold out in, like, three days, like, nearly 100 tickets. So uh, that was mad. There's a band called Flechette who came on tour with us, uh, supported us in Leeds, and they were mega. Uh, a band called River are all really good. There's too many. I'd have to send you a playlist because there's, yeah. there's literally so many. Even, like you were saying before, Yardak, I haven't really heard of them. I think they've got a song on FIFA that I yeah. sort of vaguely recognise. Yeah. Um, and then I went and put the album on when I seen it got to number two, and I was like, wow, these are mad. Like, like nothing I'd ever heard before. It's genius, so isn't it? I it. sat and listened through the album, and I'm like, there's points when you listen to the lyrics, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this yeah, is the yeah. weirdest but coolest, like, thing. smartest thing lyrically. And, like, obviously, it all kind of just surrounds around the lyrics, like the way they play it. But, yes, but when they yeah. start, like, there's not like two of them. They have, like, a full-on conversation, the whole song, in one of them. And they're just talking to each other in the song and stuff. And you just so like, good. The fuck is going great, on? Yeah, it's a great album. Yeah, you like that. But yeah. yeah, definitely send us it. We'll um, 
We'll put up a story and link your playlist when it goes up so that people can... Uh, yeah, we'll share it about on Twitter too. Yeah, we'll share we'll share the playlist link yeah. so anyone who's uh, is listening now have a look on our socials and Stanley's socials. You better find it somewhere. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll send you over some like, T-shirts and stuff as well because you're saying I'm off get you wearing them on the, on the hey, podcast. Hey, mate, so. I'll wear it. As soon as they come through, I'll wear it on the next podcast, mate. Tell you, for sure, for sure. <laughs> nice. We'll get yeah. it started. Definitely. Joe, who have you been listening to this week? Do you want to shout out? Oh, I've got two, 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 two. I've got a two, 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 two. on. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> the thing is, they won't know. The, podcast, not up. the could... audio listeners won't have a fucking clue. That you... I might do. It's been 45 minutes to an hour, and they're now like, Joe, uh, the whole time. Yeah. It wasn't what I was expecting. You should be pitching me the two, two, one anyway. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. what I request on every podcast. <laughs> Uh, I have two that both of which I think have been mentioned previously on the podcast, but like a long time ago, and then yeah. both released a new song. So I want to kind of bring it back up. One being Slow Time Mondays, who've literally yeah. just DM'd us as well, which reminded me to say, yeah, I know they've got a song coming out. It's tonight now, so it will have been out like just over a week when this comes out. Um, and it is really fucking good. They sent us it over, um, and they've. They've it's been like a couple of years really since they've properly had like I saw them, found them, and listened to that she likes dancing track, which is unbelievable. Oh, yeah, and, and feels um, like was it feels like 98? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a belter. Um, belter. They've got like I, think they did, I think it was an EP of it literally a couple of years ago, and they've been a bit similar to you guys. I like, had really great start, and then like since it's just not quite like they've had a lot of time off, not as many releases and stuff, but yeah, yeah. they're releasing tonight and it is class, so I'm hoping it's going to kind of give them that same notch trajectory back up to get into yeah. oh, my out. oh you can't hear anything uh, to, uh, to get I'll back into it um, yeah, yeah slow time down. Mondays they're sick and then exactly the same thing with Bud the Band yeah who like long time listeners of podcasts will know they've been on the podcast and like we raved about them after their like original demo called Corduroy um, but again they've only then pushed on from that in the last couple, couple of years they've done one song like a year ago and have now done another one now like they've all been like a year apart, but they've come back yeah. with this new one called Old Town. And it, I don't know, they've just got a really unique sound. Like they do. I just think they they feel really like, I think it, we kind of have that slight bias now because I love that original demo, but they sound so familiar now and his voice sounds really familiar. And again, there's, even though they're doing it quite slowly, but surely each song is getting a lot better in terms of like their actual production and stuff. So this new one's really good. So I'm hoping again, this leads to a little bit more consistency come out from them. So yeah, if they nail it down the consistency that but like Bud the Band could have a real good trajectory. Oh, they could, they're somewhere. really good. They really could. So both of those, Slow Time Mondays and Bud the Band, should have new songs out by the time you listen to this and go check them both out. Lip. Well, I I, I really want I, I really want to shout them out, but I really feel like I shouldn't because I feel like I've shouted them out so many fucking okay. times. Yeah. Girlfriends, yeah, have a new single out. No, I haven't heard that. Yeah, it is. And it came out today, That's it. and it's fucking quality. And I know Machine Gun Kelly's got one coming out today as well. Um, very pop punk vibes. Um, so yeah, get on them. They're just like mainstream type of stuff. And the other ones that I kind of wanted to shout out are ones I added to the playlist this week, and they are fucking nutty. That Holden James, mm. that Teenage Crisis. Yeah, that's good. That's a quality. That's a very, very quality track. And so is that El Camino, El Camino Acid. Acid. I love that one when that came on. That's El Camino so Acid. Acid. There's a it's a track called Near or Far. And I don't know how how would you describe that track? Oh, I don't even know. It's like it. I always rate it when it, when it's in our playlist because like I just shuffle it a lot and you kind of forget what's in there. Mm. And it came on and I was like, what the fuck? I don't think I've heard this one yet because it was like recently. And also you put it in, so I'd never heard it. And I was just like, who is this? Yeah. And you just like, I, I really wanted to like properly check it out, but I don't know. It's got like quite a subtle indie tone. Like it's not in your face. Yeah, it's yeah, loud, yeah. But it's got that kind of slight indie rock tone. But it's just that bit softer. But but also not in a our, pop way it's in like a yeah. yeah it's in like a weirdly it holds some like aggression without being aggressive it's a really it's a really odd vibe it's a great track as well it's a really I good fucking track. love that name as well El Camino El, Acid El Camino yeah, Acid yeah, that's yeah. Cool. That it's is a quality cool. man yeah it, they're, yeah, they're, they're yeah, two very very quality artists that are up and coming that I want to shout out sick well it's been an absolute pleasure mate cheers for having us we'll have to do it again sometime 
Yeah, definitely. We'll try and get one in person. Maybe yeah. maybe when we organise you a gig down this way, we'll have to do one at the same oh, fucking oh, time. Yeah, we'll get it sorted. I'll send you them, them T-shirts as well. Yeah, nice. do it, mate. Hopefully do it. And we'll wear them if they come in. No problem. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll get them on. And when when we get when you are booking in your next tour, shout us. We'll sort this shit out. Yeah, we'll, we'll get will. it done properly, man. We'll get it done. Nice Super. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. If you're still listening to this podcast this far through, make sure you like and subscribe to the video. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure you're subscribing and leaving a rating because they do help. It pushes it further up the charts. Um, which we actually had a really good week last week or two weeks ago now, through yeah. however long ago it was when it came. One of the most recent ones that came out, it, it reached, it peaked at number eight, which is really sick. So if we continue with stuff like that and the ratings and all that jazz on the podcast, and we'll be seeing more chart places. So thank you very much for listening and we'll see you on the other side. Peace.